This video will discuss the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for the distribution of the speeds of molecules in an ideal gas. So this distribution was first derived by Maxwell and then later confirmed uh, experimentally decades later. But what it says is that if we look at the distribution of speeds of a particle in an ideal gas moving in, for example, the x dimension, well, what are those distributions of speeds? So the most likely speed is at zero meters per second because it's, it's equally likely to be moving to the left or to the right. So on average, it's gonna be zero in the X. Um, so if we look at what this probability is, we notice that it ends up being a Gaussian function. So there's a peak at zero and then there's some standard deviation and about 95% of the particles lie within plus or minus two standard deviations of zero. Um, the lower the temperature you are at, the more spiked this distribution is towards zero. As your temperature goes up, there's a greater and greater deviation of the particle speeds away from zero and up into higher values of ux. So this function is equal to a prefactor, the mass of the particle over two pi times Boltzmann constant times temperature and then square root of all that. Then we have our Gaussian e to the minus mass times velocity in the x direction squared divided by two times Boltzmann constant times temperature. So the, uh, the distribution or the, the standard deviation of this Gaussian is determined by what the mass of the particle is and what the temperature of the gas is. All right, so that's in one individual dimension. So this probability distribution is equally, uh, it's the same in y and z. So you could equally well replace this with f of u y or f of u z. So what we want then is the distribution of the total speed. So the speed in all dimensions. So that's ux squared plus uy squared plus uz squared square root. So when you do that and you take that transformation, the resulting function you get as a function of molecular speed which now note that it starts at zero because the speed is an absolute value. So the probability distribution for the speed of our gas molecules equals the same prefactor, mass divided by two pi Boltzmann constant times temperature square root. Now we have u squared, the square of the velocity, times e to the minus m u squared over two kt, a, a Gaussian decaying from the origin. So what this leads to is the, ki the kind of behavior that we have graphed here. At low temperatures, we have our peak at a low speed. So it start, there's zero probability the particle is stationary at zero. There's zero probability it's infinite. And then in between, we reach a peak at some low speed and then gradually tail off with a heavy tail as we approach a probability of zero. As you increase the temperature, you change uh, this you change this denominator of our exponent. So what happens is at higher temperatures, we get the distribution to be more spread out. The peak is at a higher velocity and the tail uh, has a non-zero value for an even greater length. And then finally, at greater and greater temperatures, the velocity distribution spreads out even more. Our peak is at a, an even higher velocity and the tail continues on to even higher velocities. Okay, so some notable properties of these distributions. I said the average value of the velocity in the x direction is zero because it's equally likely to be moving to the left or to the right. So those two cancel one another and the average speed in x, y, and z is equal to zero, which is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of ux times the probability of f of u of x. All right, the average value squared, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the speed in the x dimension squared times f of u of x. So that's the average square velocity in the x dimension. That is equal to kt over m, Boltzmann constant times temperature divided by molar mass, which is also equal to the gas constant times the temperature divided by the molar mass. So mass of an individual particle and mass of an entire mole of particles. 
R equals KB times Avogadro's number, big M equals little m times Avogadro's number. So as a, as a net, those two cancel out. Okay, so the average square velocity is related to the temperature and inversely related to the molar mass. Lighter gases go faster, higher temperature gases go faster. All right, for our total, um, for our total distribution function, the average value there, so the average speed of our molecule in all three dimensions, this integral, is equal to the square root of 8RT over pi m. So we have that same kind of uh, RT over m dependence here inside of our square root, but now we have 8 over pi as our coefficient there. And the, uh, the expectation value of u squared, so the average square velocity, which we saw from our previous video, 3kt over m, or 3rt over big M. Okay, so some, some interesting speeds that we can take note of here on this graph. The point where the first derivative of the probability distribution with respect to speed equals zero, and the second derivative is negative, that would be a maximum in the speed. So the derivative of the speed is zero, at zero, at infinity, and at this maximum. But at zero and at infinity, the second derivative is positive. It's concave upward, whereas at the maximum, it's concave downward. So what this, what this speed is, is what's called the most probable speed, or UMP. So if we solve this equation, take the first derivative of this, set it equal to zero, and then find the value that isn't zero or infinity, you'll get the most probable velocity, this UMP at the peak here. And that value ends up being the square root of 2RT over the molar mass. Okay, uh, interest, another interesting value, uh, let's see, is the expectation value or the average value of our speed. So taking into account not only uh, what is the most probable, but also what is the average value of every single speed. So a an unweighted average of every single speed. Note that the tail is heavier on this side than it is on this side. So our average value is gonna be bigger than our most probable value. So what we get for that is this value that we got from that integral, square root of eight RT over pi M. So that's about 12% higher than the most probable speed. So on average, the particles travel about 12% higher than the mode. So this is the mean and the most probable speed is the mode. All right, then lastly, we have the root mean squared speed from our previous video, which is the square root of the expectation value of the square velocity. So it's the square root of this, which is the square root of 3RT over M. So the, the root mean square speed is the average square, is the square root of the average square speed. So due to these higher speeds, those contribute more to the square. So the root mean square speed in the end ends up being about 22% bigger than the most probable speed or another 10% or so bigger than the average speed. So this is our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for any gas. If we know its molar mass and the temperature, then we can compute its probability distribution. We can calculate the probability that the gas is faster or slower than a given, temp than a given uh, velocity, what the most likely velocity is, the average velocity, or even the root mean squared velocity.